warroomsports.com. Get that mobile app. Sports fans, welcome to this episode of Field Vision brought to you by War Room Sports. The sports kings are still on the run from the law, but we are here holding it down. Styles and Jada Style, I got my brother B. Austin in the building. What's really good? Yo, man, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're doing it with, man, sports kings, be blessed, man. You Return already know, to the man. world. We still had to bring you. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> we still had to bring you this episode. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm top five DOA. Shout out to Jada. But listen, B. Austin, man. Um, we got to pick some games, but before we do, there's a topic that I have to talk to you about. That's wide receiver in the NFL. This topic came about because Tory Holt was discussing the best wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Um, somewhat, uh, his words were taken out of context. Uh, he said Amari Cooper, who plays for the Raiders, the young guy, is, mm-hmm. the people said that he thought Amari was the best in the league. That's mm-hmm. not what he said. What he said was he would take Amari right now over everybody. But you have mm-hmm. to understand that's factoring in his age and his most productivity. Up, most, most upside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this leads me to a question. Uh, what do you think about his assessment of one Amari Cooper? And, you know, just give me your top three to five guys in the league right now because there's a lot of great receivers. Um, I told, I, I heard what he said. I totally agree with it. Um, that, that would be my pick. Um, it's been a long time, if ever, that we've seen a wide receiver come into the league with the tools that he has um, from a skill set standpoint. So athletically, um, he, he's, he's, he's very talented. Uh, but we we've seen other athletic wideouts like he's not a freak. Uh, he's very athletic, but he's not, you know, a freak of nature type of athlete. But his technician, he, he's a technician. What I like mm-hmm. to call a technician. And he runs every route in a route tree. He understands the subtle nuances of those routes and the ability to deceive the uh, the coverage, get open. Uh, he runs routes well against man and against zone. Um, and he yeah. runs all of his routes as if he's getting the ball. And what that does is it sets up the defense because they have to account for him as if he's, you know, the primary receiver, whether it's a run play, whether it's going, the ball's going to the other side, it, it keeps the defense honest versus some other receivers. You know, historically, we talk about Randy Moss, you know, who would just kind of have a conversation with the DB and put his hands on his hips and chill when the rock wasn't coming his way or, you know, even Deshaun Jackson, who goes to the sideline, gets a lawn chair, has some cool aid down when the ball's not coming his way. So, um, you know, it's very rare that you see a star wide out give that much effort when the ball's not coming his way. So he, he's to be commended for that. But I think for me, when I watch him play in the film that I've seen, I'm just really, really impressed with his technical ability uh, to play the position, you know, and, and, and the nuances of the game that he already understands. He's a better route runner than some of the, the greats um, that, that we'll get to right now in the game, which um, for me, I still hold Calvin Johnson uh, in high esteem. Um, I think productivity has tailed off as much because of Matthew Stafford. No, 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 no. I want to clear this up, though. I'm not saying based on body of work. I'm not okay. saying your favorite. I'm not okay. saying your personal favorite or based okay. on body of work. Right now, who are your three – Top, top, uh, Antonio Brown, AJ Green, Julio, uh, the Afro Mexican, uh, Dez, um, and Amari Cooper. Wow, so you will put Amari Cooper in your five right now. Mm, yeah, Demarius would probably be six. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is up there as well, and then, um, and then the uh. Uh, the alternative lifestyle boy in uh, in in New York, um, Odell Beckham. Odell okay, Beckham. all right. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of Amari Cooper, I do think that he's a very talented receiver. Watching him play, but I think mm-hmm. sometimes in sports we get caught in this uh, this thing where we want to be the first person to announce that someone's the best at something, so we jump out mm-hmm. kind of prematurely. Um, you know, Top prisoners prisoners in the moment. Yeah, sensational, yeah, 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 sensational yeah, yeah. journalism. You know. You know, so, so sometimes that happens, like me with a beautiful young mm-hmm. lady, sometimes it's premature. But, um, you know, with that being said, you also have the, alter- the other side of that where people are afraid to say someone's the best at something until it's mm-hmm. completely obvious. But they're on two different sides of the spectrum. I don't think Amari Cooper makes my five yet. Um, I'm also mm-hmm. a Broncos fan, so maybe a little bit of hate. Um, I can admit that. Um, I do hate at times. 
No, but, no, I, I, I respect but, that. I respect but if I, had, if I had to pick my five, though, to be honest with you, a lot of those guys that you named are in my five. Julio mm-hmm. Jones, Antonio Brown, um, A.J. Green, who never really gets his it's chance to. A.J. Green, man. Um, I would say Des, but I would have Demarius ahead of Amari Cooper right now. You know, you know my um, problem with Demarius. And I, and I may, I may even put, I may even put Odell ahead of Amari right now because, yeah, uh, because yeah. you know, he yeah. Odell's ridiculous, you know, he's ridiculous. Uh, he, oh, is, he, he, he needs to chill with trying to catch everything on one hand because sometimes I think he does that drawing. Oh, yeah. He drawingly does that at times. I, when I watch him, especially for his size, now he he's a super athlete, but he's not a monster. When I watch him, I feel like like Odell has the ability to catch so well, like he's gifted catching the ball. He sometime, I, I, I feel like his route running needs to develop a little, a little further. The same could be said for, for your guy, Demarius, man, Demarius doesn't run a, a route. He just monsters you. Like I'm just bigger than you. I'm faster than you. I'm stronger than you. So just throw the ball up. I'm just taking it. From. So like Demarius really only runs like three or four routes. Um, he just can't be covered. And that's the same with Julio. Like Julio's route running has gotten a lot better through the years. Cause when he first came in, like, I don't think he knew what a route was. He just goes out and you throw it to him and he catches it. Um, but I think some of those guys don't put the work in. And a part of that is, is some, some of what you said in, in the podcast, uh, the war room, which you can catch at warroomsports.com. Um, the the day and age we live in when you compare what guys are doing today to what jerry rice did you got to think about the coverage that they're facing these guys a lot of times don't have to be technicians because they're already six two to six four you know 200 to 225 pounds versus dbs that are you know small significantly smaller than them they don't have to be such technicians with the route running because they just use their side. They just lean on DBs, run out there, post them now, up. Now, real quick, though, just side. just to your point, because mm-hmm. I think that sometimes in sports, right, not just talking specifically about the wide receiver, but mm-hmm. you may see it in the NBA or whatever, or boxing, you can make this, what I'm getting ready to say, analogy in any sport. Sometimes you have guys who are extreme technicians, and mm-hmm. then you have someone who is just an uber athlete. And mm-hmm. they're so far ahead of everyone else athletically that they can be more dominant without even having to develop those techniques because they're just that far ahead athletically. That, that, yeah, and that's true. And that's you'll true. see that sometimes with receivers where you have a receiver who have a better career. There may be guys on his own team who are better techniques, but mm-hmm. they're so athletic that it kind of doesn't matter. The stuff that Julio Jones is doing right now, as we call him the Afro-Mexican, the stuff that he's doing right now, mm-hmm. um, it's just utterly ridiculous. It makes you laugh at times, like why isn't anybody guarding him? But they move him around and they do different things to get him to rock. So well, well, um, well, he, he's becoming that technician. Like he's not on a level of 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 an Emmanuel Sanders, let's say, or a route runner like that. But Julio is lining up like he lines up at all three wide out positions and he mm-hmm. runs routes out of those three positions, um, w- which is impressive. And and to be honest, I'll even give your man Demarius some credit there because he lines up in the slot now too. And, and so yeah, they, but Demar- they with Demarius and Julio line up in the slot and all that, they're not running a lot of routes. They're running the yo, throw me the ball. Just throw <laughs> it to me, throw it to me from this position as opposed to the outside. Yeah, so but yeah. my, my, my whole point was sometimes it doesn't matter. Um the you know it's, it's great to be a technician, right? It's sort of like a um fight I saw on World Star this week, right? Where it was a young two young boys fighting. And yes, I do enjoy World Star videos and Pornhub. Judge your mother. Ratchet. But listen though, it was two dudes fighting, and the one boy had the stance, he was bobbing his head and all that. And the other boy just grabbed him and body slammed him on his head. And it was nice. one of them things where it's like, yo, you can have all the technique in the world, but sometimes, yo, if someone's just bigger, stronger, faster than you, your technique doesn't matter. I, I agree, but I think that you're talking about outliers when you start to talk about oh, absolutely at the, at the absolutely. NFL level. Because I, I, even these guys that we look at as such monsters in today's game, if they were allowed to play against grown man corners like Todd Law, Type corners like maul you and 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 lay no, them and put them hands on you. I, they would have to develop. Like you're not gonna get away with monster. You can monster a guy now because you can go 20 yards down the field and he's not allowed to touch you, tackle you, or or. No, I agree with you, but that's that that's what we're talking about. In the words of Style P, Styles P, we're talking about the upper echelon. I think the word is <laughs> echelon, but Styles always says echelon. But anyway, the upper echelon. We we talk about the upper echelon of wide receivers. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the guys who were outliers because 
when you look at the day and age we're in, there's like great receivers all over the place. Right. Which is funny, which is funny when you look at the teams that win championships because most of them don't have great receivers yet. Yeah, you look at yeah, Seattle, yeah. you look at the Yo, Patriots. But I have you know what I have a problem, man, with guys that don't develop technically, man, like Vincent Jackson and and Mike Evans. Like, I don't think they could live 15 years ago. But Mike Evans is young, though. He's still fine. He's young, but he's still one of those guys where his is a hands thing. Like, he may develop hands, but still never be able to run routes and round routes off. Like, as great as he is, listen, here's another guy. As great as he is, and I acknowledge Larry Fitzgerald's greatness, Larry Fitzgerald don't run routes. Larry will round a route off in a heartbeat and just shoot the storm the ball. My man run to throw me the ball route. That's yeah. all he needed to run, man. Listen, man. Like, TMB. T.O. wasn't a great route runner. And, uh, our no, 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 no. That's not true. T.O. took a route. T.O. No, T.O. T. O. T. O. wasn't a great route runner. He he may have been average yeah. at best, but T.O. T. O. was just – he was just stronger than everybody else. Like, he was he, that he, too. But T.O. Developed, developed into a route runner, man. He was he was a protege of Jerry Rice. Yo, he from did. a skill standpoint, T.O. wasn't that good. No, anyway, hands wise, he wasn't that good. No, just skills in general. But I tell you what, though, once he got his hands on the ball, it's a wrap. <laughs> it was a problem. It it's a wrap. wrap. It's a wrap. But just a matter of him holding on to the ball, getting his hands on the ball. Um, but T.O. couldn't why catch, was, but he yeah, was a great wide receiver. That's amazing to be a great wide receiver who can't catch. Yeah. That is, uh, salute to T.O., man. Um, the comparisons to him and Moss will always be there. We could debate that another day. Um, but I just want to get your thoughts. Around. Just want to get your yeah. thoughts on a wide receiver. See, Moss is funny, though, because, like, you know, Dev said in our podcast, like, Moss wouldn't care what was going on the other side of the field. Moss said in his own words that he did that on purpose. Yeah. Then, he, then he would act like that and then run past you. Yeah. So, but he was a smart I, I, I think, I think, Moss, I think, that, was, I think that was capped by Moss. He was BSing. Yeah. But it's, cap you know, nonetheless, that was definitely cap game. But B. Austin, though, um, before we get out of here, we can have our conversation about wide receivers. Let me get your pick on a couple of games this week. Uh, the first one is the Dolphins at your Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I don't, I don't believe. I don't believe. I mean, even the games that we won were four and four. Now those four, there's no um faith in the offense uh, for me. So I'm actually picking the Dolphins to uh, to beat us this week. Okay, damn, man. You ain't picked the Eagles last week either, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm taking the Eagles at home. Uh, next game is the Bears at the Rams. Are you taking Jay Cutler? Because when you have a quarterback Yo, like Jay Cutler. When you have a quarterback like Jay Cutler, man, listen, Jimmy will forever be a Jay Cutler hater and detractor, but it, there's just moments where you see Jay Cutler show you the things that he – show you what could be, man. Jay Cutler has the talent and the ability to be great, man. He really does, man. And the arm Yo, strength is ridiculous. All that being said, I'm taking the Rams. The, the sun shines and the dog has, uh, you know, some days as well. And even the broken clock is right twice a day. Shout out to the whispers. But um, with all that being I'm said, taking the Rams. I'm taking the Rams too. I would never pick with Jay Cutler because when you have a quarterback like Jay Cutler, uh, next game we have the Patriots at the Giants, and the Giants have been known to ruin Patriots seasons. Who are you taking in this game, B. Austin? I don't pick against Brady. Not this year, man. He got, yeah. he got attitude problem this year. Yeah, took, he's on the mission. He took it personal. His next man up. The Patriots are rolling. They're looking like the best team in the league. I can say that because Fred's not on the panel tonight. I'm taking the Patriots. Uh, last game, I got to get your opinion about. This is a game in the NFC West, a big game. We have the Cardinals at the Seahawks, both coming off of a bye week. Who are you rolling with? Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah. I'm taking the home team. I think the Seahawks want to. I know the Cardinals want to buy this past week. The Seahawks, I think we're going to buy as well. But anyway, I'm taking the Seahawks. They're the home team. They're about four and four right now. It's time for them to uh, turn up so they can make their run towards the bowl. Um, I'm going to roll with the home team. I'm taking the Seahawks. I respect. Also, anything you want to say about wide receivers before we get out of here? Um, man, work on your trade craft. Young wideouts watching this, work on your trade craft. Okay. Only thing I want to say is, yo, uh, salute to Jerry Rice. Because Jerry Rice is the stats of two Hall of Famers. Yeah, um, yeah. And I want to say that Jerry Rice is probably the only player at any position where there really isn't an argument of who's better. You can make an argument at quarterback. You can make an argument in basketball at almost every position who's the greatest ever. But Jerry Rice, no argument. it's really clearly no debate. When you start to argue, I just point to the fact that, yo, he got like 25,000. <laughs> 
<laughs> yo, he got, yo, he got 25k. Listen, man. So with that being said, yo, that's, yo, that's yo, two great yo, careers. There's nothing left that to be said. Two great careers. Yo, that's the career of two Hall of Famers. Nothing left to be said. <laughs> Listen, before yo, we get yo, out of here, Steve, yo, share Steve, this video. Steve, Steve, uh, who the boy in Baltimore? Steve, Steve Smith. Smith. Steve Smith is going to the hall with thirteen thousand yards. Yeah, yo, Jerry yeah, Rice got, got twenty four. <laughs> he did that twice though. He doubled him up, yo. No R. Kelly. Listen though, man. Listen, share this video, share the audio, as we always oh, say, man. Gosh. Really, just rock with us, man. WorldSports.com. Check everything we do. Get the mobile app. Just bang with us, man. As we always say, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. Yo, you got two Hall of Fame careers. <laughs> Wait, it's the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly guys diversified and educated.